Hey everyone, this is Tim Box. Uh, today in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to set up UDM patches for high-res film quality models. Now, this process can take a little bit of time to set up, especially if your model has a lot of UDMs, but it will actually save you a lot of time in the long run. Okay, so the first thing that we want to make sure that we have set up correctly is our model. The most important thing to uh, remember is to make sure that it's completely named. Uh, if it's not named, you, you, you're just going to uh, get into a, a lot of uh, problems. Um, so once once you have your model, once it's uh, named, you want to make sure that it's uh, you, completely UV'd. So when setting up your UVs, um, especially when you're using multiple patches, there's a few things to remember. Uh, the first and probably the most important one is to make sure that you keep it in this top right hand corner. Uh, most uh, texturing programs won't read um, any um, patches that go outside of the um, this top square. And also make sure that on the, the x-axis, which is um, across, uh, never go over 10. It doesn't matter how many um, patches you go up on the Y, just never go over 10 on the X. Um, so, uh, also another thing to remember is you want to make sure that, um, like any good UVing, that none of the um, none of your UVs are crossing over the the borders of any of the uh, patches either. Um, so. That's that's the uh, the basic gist of setting up your um, patches um, when you have multiple UDMs. Okay, so when you have um, all your UV set up, now you can start focusing on the actual shader. Uh, now, when setting up the shader, there's um, two ways that I personally know that you can do it. Um, the first one is using the um, layered shader um, I personally would not recommend using it um, when I first tried using the layered shader I just ran into so many problems with it um, and it's also extremely limited as you can only use um, 16 uh, file nodes um, in the layered um, layered shaders um, it's easier just to plug the file nodes into each other which um, I will actually show you and using that method you can plug in as many as you want um, so I'll actually show you one that I prepared earlier now as you can see there are a lot of file nodes um, I've got uh, this set up for my diffuse, specular and normal um, just a, a few things to point out. Firstly is I have absolutely everything named. Um, as I um, stressed before, naming is so, so important, um, particularly um, in this area when you've got a lot of UDM patches um, and you've got a even more file nodes. Um, so if, if you have, say, 16, um, a even 20, um, file nodes times that by three that's that's 60 file nodes you need to know which each and every single um, node is and what it's going to be doing um, another thing to remember is that with the place 2d um, texture nodes this is um, a step that is it's it's very simple but it's extremely important when we go in there's two things to remember first it's the translate frame what the translate frame um, is basically doing is um, uh, choosing the focus point on your um, UVs so if we bring uh, my UVs back up as you can see it's um, the first one is set at zero zero so what that means is um, it's set on um, frame zero, 
0, so 0 on the x and 0 on the y. Going across, it will be set to 1, 0. So, um, it's frame 1 on the x, frame 0 on the y. Bottom one is always 0 on the y, second one up is the first on the y. So, um, that can get a little bit confusing, but if you remember that um, the bottom is x and up is y, um, it, it, it gets a little bit easier. The second step to remember is uh, wrap u and v, these two here. Um, they are automatically um, selected. You want to deselect these. Um, if you don't, um, even though you have um, translate frame on, all your um, UDIMs, will, all your files, file nodes will actually be reading from the single um, UV patch. Um, because when, when you've got it wrapped, it's wrapping all the UVs together. So you want to make sure that uh, you deselect uh, wrap U and wrap Y. Um, so I'll actually show you now how to uh, plug everything in now that um, you've got an understanding of um, how everything works. Okay, so let's um, set up uh, a shader. So we'll clear all this and we'll bring in a Lambert. So first thing that we want to do is that we want to name our shader. So we'll call this, um, since we're dealing with a um, head, we'll call it head um, shader, and we'll call it zero 01. Okay, um, it's also good to keep your naming conventions nice and simple. Um, instead of spelling out the whole word, um, abbreviations like SDR for shader, um, DIF for diffuse, so on and so forth. Um, you want your naming conventions to be um, descriptive, but not stupidly long. So you really just have to find that balance. Um, okay, so say our model has um, three UDIM patches. So we'll want three file nodes, right? Now, first we want to name these. So we'll call this diff01. Um, one good practice to have is to also uh, name it the, the actual UDIM number in the name. This will really help, especially when you export out of programs like Mari, which actually put the um, UDIM number in the name. So when you're um, importing the, the file into your um, file node, you know exactly which one is going to go where. Um, so as you can actually see with um, this, you, you can see I've got um, 1001 um, for the first patch, 1002, so it's going across. Um, programs like Mari, which I mainly use for texturing, uh, it will count the first um, patch as 1, and the second one as two instead of my which reads it as zero then one then two um, so you can see um, with my different um, names just for example um, on the second level up that's gone up to one so it's one zero one one um, I normally put that second name uh, that number in um, when I'm actually importing the the um, files um, just so then I don't actually mix up the names um, but that's that's really up to you so that's just uh, one other thing to remember so let's go back to our shader and create those uh, file nodes again okay So the diffuse zero one, and we will plug this into our color diffuse two. Oops, that's three. Ah, uh, okay, I see. 
Um, I'll just bear with me for a sec. Uh, whoops. Okay, so we're happy with the names. Now all we have to do is plug them in. So we um, select our um, second uh, file node, middle mouse click, and we drop it. Now you can see all these different um, selections. All we have to do is simply select default color and do that for each and every one. There we go. Now under the place 2D, um, again, it's just those two steps. Um, it's automatically on 0, 0 for translate frame. So all we have to do is deselect the uh, U and the V. Uh, second one, that's 1. And deselect the U and the V. Third one, that'll be 2. There we go. So that's all we have to do. If I want to put in more, um, it's the same, um, same thing. Plug this in, default color, unwrap UV, and that one was two, that's right, so that'll be three. So that's all you have to do when setting up the uh, your shader. Um, as I said before, it can take quite a while, especially when you've got you know a lot of patches like these. Um, I've heard of other artists dealing with models which actually have hundreds of patches so um, if you set it all up um, cleanly and correctly you will save yourself a lot of time down the road um, and once everything is plugged in correctly you can actually say if you're going into working out of Mari or even Photoshop you can um, make any fixes that you, you need to to the actual textures and it will actually um, reload in the, the file nodes automatically so you can just um, click render to see how you like it. Um, so that's basically it for this tutorial. I hope that you got something out of it and um, good luck for your uh, future projects. Cheers!